Hey kids, it's Pastor Jeremy and I'm in a spot you've probably never seen me before. I'm hanging out with my daughter this morning and uh, we're, it's actually one of my favorite things to do and we love to play together. And this is perfect timing because this month we're learning about creativity. Right now she's being create pretty creative, check it out. All right, we've got to check you out. Like click, 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 click. You need me to check, make sure everything's okay. What else? What happens next? Oh, then your temp your temperature. Okay. Oh, oh, it goes in your mouth too. Cool. All right. What happens after that? Yeah. A shot. You want a shot? Okay. Here we go. Oh. That's a lot of shots. What happens next? Oh, we have to listen to your heart? Okay, I'll listen to your heart. Oh, it sounds perfect. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh, uh and then put the band-aid on all better good job <laughs> well that wasn't planned but good grief she is so much fun my favorite thing to play with her is paw patrol and that's her paw patrol stuff that's pretty cool i like chase he's awesome no matter what we do we get to be super creative and god gave us creativity. Uh, God created the entire world. He, he did it in a very short period of time and he showed his creativity, but he gives me and you creativity, uh, which is pretty awesome. And no matter what we do, when we use our imagination and we come up with things, whether it's playing or drawing or anything, those are gifts from God. And it's pretty, pretty neat. Before we get into today's story, we're going to have some fun. We have a new song this month that we're going to do every week. It's a lot of fun. And so I want you to get up and have some fun with that. But I cannot wait to see you when we start back. And uh, if you haven't seen our Kids Pastor Challenge, we'd love for you to go check that out and email me a challenge because I would love to come to your house and hang out and uh, compete with you at some point. So get on your feet. We're going to dance here in just a second. And uh, again, can't wait to see you. Bye. Imagination. 
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so Hello, I'm John, and welcome back to The Joy of Sculpting, where we take beautiful things and make even more beautiful things out of them. Let's take this sculpture of my co-host, Brandon. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So lifelike, his eyes, his hair. The detail really is marvelous. But what if we can make something new out of it? Let's see. Let's take a, a little bit of Brandon's hair off, like this. And we can just put that there. Oh, that's nice. Kind of squishy. And what do we have here? Oh, look. It's Brandon's little brain. Little brain. We'll put that right, right here very carefully. And what if his ears can go here? There you go. Now let's take Brandon's happy eyes. And we can put those eyes, put them right here. Look at those wonderful eyes. <laughs> Looking right back at you. <laughs> what do these eyes seem? I don't know. Just put those mm, right there. Now, what can we make with what's left? I think I have an idea. What if we make an edge right there? Yeah, yeah, and an edge right here, uh-huh, well that's nice. How about here? Oh, that's nice. Or how about here? Hey, I'm starting to see something. <laughs> here we go. Let's, do, let's just use the, the board for extra pressure. Isn't that beautiful? It's a brick. You could build a big, beautiful house out of this brick. That's how strong it is. Hey, John, have you seen my self-sculpture? I've been looking for it. How nice. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to The So and So Show. Well done, high yeah. five. Oh, that was close. I'll get it, I'll figure it out one day. Sure. So what is all this stuff that you have? Oh, I'm coming up with some uh, a new super mutants for a new comic book I'm creating. Oh, well, that sounds fun. What? How do you come up with your new mutants? Well, I have a jar of heads. Okay. A jar of creature buddies. And a jar of superpowers. Oh, and you what? Do you just what? Draw them out? Sure, sure. I'll show you. I'll show you. Watch this. Um, oh, I got a horse head. <laughs> All right. And I'll just take this one. Uh, oh, T Rex body. Look at cool, that. Cool, cool. And a superpower is static electricity. Oh, static electricity. Huh. Yeah. Not everyone can leap over tall buildings in a single bound, Brand. Oh, uh, well, that's true, I guess. There you go. <laughs> I think we'll call this guy Sir Neighborly the Spokosaurus Rex. I think I can make this more interesting. <gasps> Explain how! All right. Mutant Melee. What am I looking at? Hey, that's me! Uh, no, that's your avatar. Except now you're... Sir Neighborly. The Sparkosaurus Rex. Superpower, static electricity. Versus Panda King. Superpower, interpretive bamboo. Ready? Melee! <laughs> it's working! 
Static electricity! No! Yes. Ow. Ow! My turn. What are you doing? Music! Who am I gonna be this time? How about? Captain Fish Breath. Superpower, dead. Fish Breath versus Bat Boy. Superpower can fly. As long as he doesn't realize he's in the air. What does he mean I can only fly unless I realize I'm in the air? Ready, melee. Ah, I'm flying! Oh no! <laughs> Ow! This is a video game! I shouldn't be able to smell it! <laughs> oh, that's terrible! Winner! Oh, it still stinks! Uh, get these things off me. Yeah, that does stink. Ah. Great, I'm gonna have to do laundry. Oh, or maybe burn them. Wait, before you do that, it's Bible story time with Kelly. Hey, everybody. What's up, Kellen? Not much. Say, what do you got there? Uh, laundry from our game of Mutant Melee. Cool. Do you mind if I use it for the story? Oh, sure thing. Thanks. Our story starts with the very first verse of the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape. There was darkness over the surface of the waves. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness and called the light day and the darkness night. How's that for a beginning? And that was just day one. On the second day, God made the sky. God said, let there be a huge space between the waters. And that's exactly what happened. And God called the huge space sky. That was day two. But it was the next day when God's creativity really took root. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let the dry ground appear. God called the dry ground land. Then God said, let the land produce plants and trees and plants and flowers sprung out of the ground and God saw that it was good. That closes the book on day three, but God wasn't finished. He had a whole sky to fill. God said, let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. And so the stars were created. And then God made the moon to rule over the night. He made the sun to rule over the day, and God saw that it was good. Day four, boom, sun, moon, and stars. Without them, we wouldn't know what time of day it was. Think about that. Okay, stop thinking. Things are about to get wild. God said, let the seas be filled with living things. So God created every kind of living thing that fills the oceans. And God said, let birds fly above the earth across the huge space of the sky. And then God created every kind of bird that flies. And God saw that it was good. That was the fifth day, but it was the sixth day when God made his masterpiece. And I'm not talking about the platypus. God said, let the land produce every kind of animal, cows, horses, chickens, bugs, snakes, mice, rhinoceroses, orangutans, platypi, and it was all good. And then God said, wait for it, let us make human beings. Watch out world. Here we come. 
So God created human beings in his own likeness. He created them as male and female. And God told them to take care of the earth and all that was in it. This was day six. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But before he did that, he took a good look at everything he had created and he saw that it was very good. The end. That was incredible. It really is incredible when you think about all the things God created. I mean, whether it's a huge planet in space or a tiny little eyelash, right? Oh! Ow. Make a wish. No, you are so weird. What? Get that away from me. Yeah. There's really no limit to God's creativity. You can find it anywhere. I found it sitting right next to me. Aww. Thanks for the story, Kellen. You got it. See you guys next time. Later. See ya. What a great story. Yeah, I what loved a... how my gym shorts turned into orangutans. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I took from the story, too. <laughs> yeah. Reveal the question. Awesome. Where do you see God's creativity? Yeah, do you see it in a stream flowing through the woods? Or in a star that's over 100 miles away? Yeah, except stars are like millions of miles away, John. So, over 100, right? Right. Talk about it with each other. Where do you see God's creativity? And we will see you next time on The So-and-So -so -so Show. Show. It's right there. You can read it. It's in gold. <laughs>